All right, we're just giving a few moments for everybody to get signed in. We'll start our service this evening with prayer. I have several prayer updates that we'll need to do, and uh, we'll take care of those in just a few minutes. Waiting on everyone to get signed on and ready to go tonight. Making sure my internet is working correctly here. All right, it does appear that we are live. Our text will be in Hebrews 2 this evening, Hebrews chapter number 2 will be our text for tonight. Let's see if I can get this thing here to be quiet for me. And uh, All right, yeah, it's on there. I see Miss Alyssa and a few others have gathered in. And it ain't want to be quiet, but there it goes. There's Miss Renee, Miss Tina Curtis. Thank you folks for joining in. Let me give an update for those that's unaware. There has been several in our area, uh, three or four, uh, one unconfirmed, but I understand there's a fourth church that's got infection in it. Uh, one here very close to us, some friends of ours just up the road have been infected. I'm not going to give out their names. I don't know if that's okay to do that on here. Um, and I didn't ask permission ahead of time, so I'll not do that. But they are uh, good friends of ours and, and good area churches here uh, that have been infected. Uh, there's much as 12 infected in the one church. I believe the other church has got four uh, confirmed infections. Uh, I think everybody's treating well with it, and uh, we're going to pray that everybody is. That's going to be part of our prayer tonight. Um, so just wanting to uh, let everybody know because of that, our church is going to step back just a little bit again uh, to the online live services through Facebook uh, for the Sunday night and the Wednesday evening services, um, and then we'll do Sunday morning. Uh, we're planning to do a drive-in service Sunday morning, but we're going to do it at 10 o'clock instead of waiting till 11 o'clock. The reason for that is I'm going to try to beat the heat. I don't want you to have to sit out in your vehicles with the... Uh, Cars running the air conditioning, that would increase the noise and the uh, problem hearing the service, and we don't want you to have to do all of that, so uh, we're going to meet at 10 Sunday morning, and we'll try to get everything set up and get everybody ready, and we'll try to do our singers uh, as we can. We had planned on having Brother Ricky, Ad Ricky Adkinson, Adkinson uh, here with us this coming Sunday night, but we've postponed that. And we'll have Brother Ricky in. We, we, we enjoy his good singing, uh, but we'll have him in at a later date uh, due to this outbreak that's going on right now. I don't, I don't want to take a chance of any of our folk getting sick with it. Our folks has done well. They've been well uh, mannered in, in their distancing and things pretty much. We had a good service the other, uh, the other day, and the Lord blessed in it in a great way. But uh, I want to keep our folks safe, and uh, I do understand the necessity there. Let me mention a few prayer requests. Uh, I see some folks watching there, um, and we'll take some more maybe at the end of this today. Um, number one, we want to listen. We want to remember to pray for Miss Nikki. Um, she has been extended in her fasting. She's already got, I believe, seven days in. They're going to extend it out another 10 days. That's going to take her up to a total of 
17 days of no nutrients. They are given some, uh, some stuff through IV um, to try to help and stabilize. Uh, she has lost weight. She's down as much as 70 pounds, uh, and uh, that's, that's very feeble. So her situation is very critical. It's very serious. We do not know the Lord's will in it. His ways is far above our ways. I'm not trying to figure out his will in it. I'm just trying to pray God's will be done and grace and mercy for the family and healing for Miss Nikki. So I'd ask that you pray likewise with us in that. Also tonight, I want you to remember Preacher Joe. Um, he's having some issues. He was diagnosed a year ago with some lung uh, illness there. And he's got some other issues going on right now. They're trying to get it figured out exactly what medication to use to treat that. So do pray for Preacher Joe uh, and his dear wife, Miss Louise. Very, very faithful and uh, very involved servants of the Lord for many, many years. Uh, I believe he got saved or surrendered to preach in 1964, um, the year I was born, which is, you know, 55 years ago. So uh, he's been at this thing a little while. He's been a very faithful and hard laboring servant of the Lord, trying to help as many as he can. So I ask this evening that you pray for Preacher Joe. Uh, remember Brother Jeremy Simpson. Some of you know Brother Jeremy. You know his dad, Brother Ronnie. His brother Andy out out uh, out was out west there doing a mission work years ago. Uh, do remember them. Pray for Miss Francis. Brother Jeremy's mother, Miss Francis, uh, had a heart attack. Uh, they have went in, looked, and fixed it with a stent. She had a 99% blockage, and they have fixed that. So we are. We are very thankful, very thankful uh, that they were able to do it with the least uh, evasive surgery that they could do. So uh, please, please uh, pray for Miss Francis and her healing after this. Pray for Brother Ronnie as he helps to take care of her and then all the other things that goes on with the, with the way things are these days. Uh, I have a daughter that's got a procedure coming up next week. I ask that you pray for her. The Lord would help her in her procedure. And... Uh, Miss Tina Curtis has got uh, needs. She's asking for prayer for her tonight. So uh, please pray for Miss Tina Curtis. I'm, I'm trying to sort of look at my uh, Facebook here. I've got a lot of folks that's dialed in tonight. Miss Gail Leard, Miss Ann Alton's in, Dennis is watching. Uh, a buddy of mine, uh, man, we went through a lot of things through the years. And uh, one, of the, one of the greatest co-workers that I ever had was James Lett. And uh, see, he's dialed in there tonight. Good to see Mike and... Renee is dialed in, so uh, we thank y'all for joining with us tonight. I am going to cease looking at that thing because it bothers me when I'm trying to preach to see that, and uh, somebody throwed up a mean face at me here a good while back, and that, that bothered me a little bit, so I don't want to see none of that kind of stuff. Uh, I do understand it was an accident when they was trying to send one of those other emojis up, but anyway, we got that took care of. All right, remember these prayer requests. I'm going to read my verses tonight. We're in Hebrews chapter number 2. It's been our study. We, we started back at that a few weeks ago. Uh, tried to do a, I've done an update or a review of chapter 1 as we had studied it before the virus setback had struck. Uh, so then I come back, done a review of chapter 1, and it brought us into uh, chapter 2. We did uh, a little bit of verse 1 and 2 last week. In chapter 2, I'm going to try to go ahead and continue this. I hope everybody can get a hold of it. Um, what you don't get, we can download into a CD format or we can put it on a DVD format, I believe. So if you need that, you can get with our guys that, that takes care of that and helps with that. Also, pray for my brother. He's been going through some things bodily and uh, he needs your prayers. So I ask you to lift up Dennis and uh, pray for him. The Lord, touch his body and help him with his uh, needs that he's dealing with. All right, read our text and then we'll get into our thought tonight. Therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, least at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the, 
by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and with gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight. We want to thank you for goodness and grace. I thank you, Father, for loving me. I thank you, Lord, for salvation that you presented us uh, full and free through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And I do pray that, Lord, you'd help us to walk in thy will with every day of our living. I ask you, Father, tonight that you'd please be with Miss Nikki. Dear God, touch her in a special way. Father, you know just exactly what she's needing in her body. You know the diseases that's affecting her, that that's troubling her body. And I pray that God tonight, in the name of Jesus, you'd touch her in a great and a special way. Help Miss Anita, Lord. We love that family. We pray that you'd bless them and help them. And Lord, with this other stuff going on in her weak immune system, we're not able to be around them like we would like to. But Lord, you know our heart breaks with them and our heart is with them and wish we could do more there. But I pray for uh, Chad and Anita as they labor to take care of Miss uh, Nikki and then God give the doctors the wisdom that they need as they take care of her. Then we pray for Miss Francis tonight. Thank you, Lord, for it not being worse than it is, not being more uh, damaged and troubled than what it already has been. I pray that God you'd give Miss Francis 100% healing. I pray that, Lord, you'll touch her and uh, bless Brother Ronnie as he's laboring there with her and the girls and, and uh, the boys. Lord, I pray you'd touch them. I know that it, it's, a, it's a touching to your heart when your family goes through these things. And I pray that, Lord, you'd help them all, give them grace, and give Miss Francis healing. Pray for Preacher Joe tonight. Lord, you'd touch him in a great and a special way. I pray for Miss Louise. And, uh, Lord, they have been very faithful servants, hard laboring servants. Uh, some of the greatest that I've ever known. And I pray that God's your, your blessings would be heavily upon them. And Lord, I pray for healing for Preacher Joe, that God should give him healing in his body and uh, raise him up and let him be able to do those things he desires to do for your honor and your glory. Then, Lord, we pray for the Greer Camp meeting that will start up uh, tomorrow night. Brother Joe will be preaching. I pray that you'll be with it and help us as we labor there. And the many things that will be going on in that meeting, I pray that uh, everybody will stay, stay healthy and healing. Uh, will be upon those that have been infl inflicted uh, with this virus. Lord, I pray for all that to be cleared up and cleared out. Uh, let us be about what we need to be for thy honor and thy glory. Uh, bless Brother Joe as he prepares for preaching tomorrow night, Brother C.T. for Friday. And then Brother McBride will be with us next week. And I pray that God, uh, there at the Greer meeting, that you'd bless Brother Brian and give him uh, the very messages that's needed for the people in this day. Then, Lord, for Brother uh, Jeremy, I know they've got meeting going on tonight. And uh, through this week, I pray that you'd be with them in an outdoor meeting. I pray that God should give them good weather and give the men of God the message that they need to preach in these days. And we'll thank you for that. Help me, Father. I sure do stand in need of your prayer, uh, your touch tonight as I pray. I need the Holy Ghost to illuminate my mind in the studies that we've uh, studied today. Help us as we try to unfold thy scriptures Give us, uh, Lord, the ability to say what needs to be said in the right way, to rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, you know our heart is not to confuse or to, Lord, to lead astray anything uh, against thy word. But, Lord, we want to do just exactly the way it is, the way it's written, and the way you intend it for our hearts. So I pray you'll help us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Uh, studying in Hebrews. Now, I'm studying. I've got uh, uh, Macedonia World Baptist Missions uh, study guide uh, or Carolina Bible College study guide. I believe Brother Andy Simpson uh, wrote the material for that back years ago and I used that as my study guide and I also study Oliver B. Green has a book on Hebrews. Uh, Dr. Harold B. Seidler and Dr. Benny Carper together have got a book on Hebrews and there's many other writers out there uh, that you can look at and study and try to draw all you can and I study after these men. I study uh, what they have been given by God. I try to try to uh, study that diligently, study the Word of God. And then as God feeds me, I try to uh, bring that in as best we can to try to be a help and a blessing. Uh, we started out, Hebrews chapter number 2. We're talking in, in this first phase of it, verses 1 through 4. We're dealing mainly with the, uh, the, the danger of drifting. 
Uh, there's a warning that we started with last week. There's a warning to drift. Uh, the word slip. He says at least uh, that we should let them slip in verse number one. And that's a, that's a bad thing. Let something slip away. We talked about that. We talked about neglect. We're going to deal with that a little bit tonight. Uh, a little more in the word neglect. But we first dealt with the, the seriousness of the scriptures. To hear the scriptures. To heed the scriptures. And to hold to the scriptures. A lot of folks will hold to traditions of man. And uh, you know it's all right if a man's tradition is built, built on the word of God. Uh, but make sure what traditions we hold to comes from the precious word of God. Amen. And you need, you need that. You need a copy of that. I, I've, I've got two different apps on my phone that I use from time to time. One, one's got some study stuff in it that I can use when I'm out and about. Uh, the other one does the reading to me so I can listen to it uh, when I'm doing other things. I've got those earbuds I put on and I can listen to it when I'm mowing different things uh, as I'm laboring or riding. Uh, so I appreciate technology, but I'm, I'm old school when it comes to this. I believe everybody ought to have a Bible in their hand. I think you ought to, you ought to use your Word of God. Uh, I, can, I can make notes in this. I can mark things, and I can go back and find it easier. Now, some of these other guys that are skilled in computers, they can do all that kind of stuff, bookmark and highlight on what they're looking at, but I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not that well versed in um, computer technology, so I can't, I can't do all those things. So I, I really like this, and I'm going to be honest with you. I can lay this to my bosom and hold on to it, and it don't do the same thing to hold that phone. You understand? There's just something about that printed Word of God that I like to have in hand uh, as I read and study uh, the very Word of God. So uh, we, we've seen the seriousness uh, of the Scriptures, and then he warns us about the seriousness of sin. That part of transgressing or disregarding God's word. Uh, he speaks of disobedience, disobeying God's word, despising God's word. And we spoke about those things last Wednesday evening uh, here at the church. Now tonight I want us to get into the seriousness of salvation. And as I've thought on this today, uh, the day that we live in, we are on the, on the very verge of the rapturing of the church. Jesus Christ could step out on a cloud at any moment. While I'm speaking tonight, he could step out and call the church home. And we go to be with him in heaven forevermore. The, the fulfillment of scriptures is there. We don't have to wait on anything else to be fulfilled. He could step out on a cloud tonight and call us home. The world as it is is already in disarray. There's all kinds of things taking place. I was reading an article today to where uh, one of the countries over there near uh, Israel is trying to get all the other uh, Islamic nations to come together in unison against Israel. And uh, that just shows you the shaping up of the end of time. So let me get into this. There's a seriousness of salvation. There's a lot of people that through the years have played church. They've been in church, they've read their Bibles, they went through Sunday schools, they went through Bible schools, they went through baptistries, and many other rituals or things, uh, forms of religion, but they've yet to receive Jesus Christ in their heart as personal Savior. You need to know that without a shadow of a doubt, should the rapture take place or should you be called home uh, through a natural death or an accidental death, whatever the case is, would be, should you be called home, be called out of this life to know that you are saved by the grace of God is the most important thing that will ever be in your life. Nothing else is any more important than salvation. You need to know you're saved. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. The Bible tells us that all sin comes toward the glory of God. The Bible tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'll call on the Lord with a heart, of repentance to the Lord, asking him to forgive and save you, he's promised that he'll do just exactly what he said he'd do, and he'll save you. So that matter of salvation, you need to, be, you need to have that full salvation. So looking at this tonight, we're looking at the seriousness of salvation. When he says, he says in verse number 3, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken, 
by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. We'll deal with all that as, we, as quickly as we can tonight. First, in the seriousness of salvation, I want you to notice there's no escape. Uh, how shall we escape? He talks about this great salvation. It's great because of what it has saved us from. Uh, it saved us from the condemnation and the pain and sorrows of hell. My salvation has delivered me from hell. I don't have to go to hell. I can't go to hell now. I've been saved. I asked Jesus to forgive me and asked Jesus to save me. And he, he, by his word, has promised to do just that. Now I have and hold salvation. And there's nothing in the world or the world to come that will or can change that. God wrote it down in the Lamb Book of Life. And he's not got a big old eraser up there to take it out. So it's a great salvation because of the condemnation of hell that it saves me from. But it also is great because of what it saves me to. Not only do I miss hell, but I get to go to heaven. I get to go spend all eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ in paradise above paradise. I mean, it's heaven is much better than the paradise that you think of here. Uh, most folks, you think of paradise, you think about laying on a beachfront somewhere with clear blue, perfect water, uh, being waited on and enjoying uh, the lazies of doing nothings. And uh, you think about that as being a paradise, a place of paradise. Hey, listen, honey, paradise, heaven's going to be a lot more than that. It's a place that's free from Satan. It's a place that's free from sin. It's a place that's free of any kind of suffering. I'm telling you, man, it's going to be a wonderful place when we get to go to heaven. Amen. That's a great place. I'm saved to salvation. But the greatest of all is I'm saved by Christ. Saved from the condemnation of hell. I'm saved unto the, unto the glories of heaven, but I'm saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. That makes my salvation the greatest. The greatest of all. The greatest man to ever live. The greatest that could ever be upon the face of the earth. Laid down his life on the old rugged cross just for me. The greatest of all gave his ultimate sacrifice. Laid his life down just for me. You know, it's not just that he died on Calvary, rose again the third day, but he lived 33 and a half years or so on the face of the earth. All of the ridicule, all the shame, all the mockeries that he went through, he lived that life just because he loved little old me. <coughs> I'm thankful that Jesus loved me that much that he was willing to live that life and die that death and rise again that I might be saved eternal salvation hallelujah to, to the lord amen it's great because as we've studied the book of hebrew is about better things it's about a better covenant it's about a better christ in the old testament they had their their uh pre-christ things that they done their sacrifices etc but we have in the new testament the lord jesus christ the greatest he's greater than the prophets greater than the angels we've done Talked about those things. So we've got the greater of the two. Uh, it's great because he has given us the New Testament, not the old. The old's went out. The, old, the new is in. And uh, he has now given us a new covenant. So I'm thankful that we have uh, the messenger that is the greatest. And now our mediator there in heaven, which is the greatest. So we have a great salvation. But I got to study in this as I looked at chapter 2. Verse number 3, it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And I got to, I got to pondering on that a little while ago. I got to thinking about, <coughs> excuse me, escape what? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? That's got a twofold meaning there as I look at that. One, it's talking about, how shall we escape if we can ne neglect so great salvation? If I neglect salvation, there is no escape. I just mentioned that. There will be no escape if I neglect so great a salvation as Jesus gave us. But then also he's talking about when you look at this, and y'all know I'm, I'm by no means an English scholar, not going to try to be. Uh, I, I do need more English learning, but and I mean that in the grammar world. When you look at verse number 2, it's followed up. It, it ends with a semicolon. Verse 3 starts out 
following that semicolon. Well, I got to studying that. There's a reason it's there. There, the semicolon connects the question that he asked here. He says, "How shall we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation?" The semicolon ends verse number two, connecting it with verse number three. So, what was he talking about? He closes out verse three, uh, verse two, in talking about those that has transgressed and were disobedient received a just recompense of their reward. What he's saying is they were judged righteously. He goes into verse number three with that same thought in mind. How shall we escape judgment if we neglect so great salvation? Now, since I already possess this salvation, and Paul here when he says, how shall we escape He's talking to saved people. And he's saying, us saved folks, how are we going to escape? How shall we escape such a great judgment? How shall we escape being judged righteously if we neglect this salvation? Now, I don't think he's meaning that we're going to face the same judgment that they did, but we're going to face a judgment. We're going to, we're going to stand at the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to give an account for what we've done in this life. And we'll receive a reward or we'll lose rewards based on the way that we have lived our life. So when you look at this here, Paul's saying, how are we going to escape? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So when I got to studying on this thing, man, I thought there's a lot, there's a lot here. He talks about this word neglect. Let me, let me re re remind you or, or rehearse in your ears a little bit about this neglect. Talked about it last week. It's to omit by carelessness or design. To forbear to do, use, employ, promote, or attend to. Means we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. So when Paul charges us with this neglect of this great salvation... That charge there, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? That charge that he's issued to us is charging us with the responsibility of this salvation. It's not just, now get a hold of this, it's not just an opportunity that God has presented to us with this salvation, but there's an obligation. Since God freely gave me salvation, I have a responsibility to share that same salvation to others. How do I do that? I give my testimony. How that the Lord Jesus Christ convicted my heart as a seven and a half year old boy. I didn't always live just right. I got away from God. I, I said things and done things that I'm ashamed of today. Uh, but you know what? God convicted me and God chastened me of doing those things that reminded me that in Hebrews chapter 12, he, he chastens every son he receives. I got saved at seven and a half years old. I got away from God later on. And God chastened me and dealt with me as a son because I was doing wrong what I was supposed to. So God dealt with me. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I can go back to what I've done wrong and God chastened me. And that, that, on top of the Word of God, gives me more assurance that I'm saved by the grace of God. So this neglect, if you're listening tonight and you're saved and you don't share the gospel and you don't tell friends, family, and foe that Jesus will save them, you're neglecting the great salvation that's been given to you. If you're not saved tonight, you're listening tonight, you're not saved, and you neglect this salvation, you're going to get a just reward for that. That reward's already spelled out. You're going to stand in, in Revelation chapter 20, you're going to stand at the great white throne of judgment, and the Lord God's going to show that you're not written in the Lamb's book of life. You've never accepted Christ as your Savior. Therefore, He's going to cast you in to a lake of fire to burn and be tormented forever and ever and ever more. So, neglecting this great salvation has a judgment to it. <clears throat> so we see there's no escape 
But we also see in this that there's no excuse. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies have been bad. <coughs> but when we look at this, neglecting our salvation, there's no escape for that, but there's no excuse. Anybody that dies and goes to a devil's hell will do so without any excuse. I'm reminded as I'm, as I'm sharing this with you this evening, I believe it's over in Romans chapter 1. He talks about those that, that he has spoken to. Uh, verse 20, well, verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clean, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even by his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. See, he's saying there's no excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, became fools, changed the glory of the incorruptible God, into an image made like an corruptible man and birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. And it goes on, says God gave them up. But see what he says there in verse number 20 of, of Romans 1. Uh, they're without excuse. Nature itself teaches us there's God. Nature itself. As I was reading there in Romans 1. <coughs> Nature teaches us there's a God. He says here in Hebrews chapter 2 that God bearing signs... Uh, bearing, bearing witness both with signs and wonders and divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. God has done many great works, therefore taking away the excuse that some would have. So you think about this excuse that some try to use. There's not going to be an excuse there. We have the witness of the Savior. It says here in verse number 3 that it was spoken first by the Lord. The Lord gave the gospel. He come on the scene preaching. Amen. He come on the scene teaching. And, and he is 12 years old. Luke chapter 2. 12 years old. He's teaching them. And they're in astonishment. They're in amazement. At his ability to teach them there. As a 12 year old boy. He was teaching them things. So we see through the life of Christ. All through his life. He's taught, taught, taught. Preach, preach, preach. He come forth preaching repentance. Uh, he, he preached to Nicodemus that he must be born again. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ. You must accept his salvation <coughs> to be born into the family of God. <coughs> and he told Nicodemus, he said, ye must be born again. So we have the witness of the Savior. Jesus Christ himself is enough witness that seeing Christ, knowing Christ, hearing of Christ, the gospel being preached of Christ is enough witness for you to receive or reject the Lord Jesus Christ. Then there's a witness of the saints. He said it's also confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Now, we've got the record of the apostles here. We've got Matthew, Mark, John. They recorded their, these apostles recorded their uh visuals of the Lord Jesus Christ and his works and his miracles in the days that they walked with him. Uh, we've got the writings here by the Apostle Paul uh, that he wrote. We've got Simon Peter's writings. We've got James's writings. These, these apostles that witnessed him have written what he has done for them. Amen. So there's the witness of the saints. There's the witness of signs. He's done signs and wonders both for the Jews and the Gentiles. He's done signs and wonders for the Jews. He's done divers miracles for the Gentiles. And he's done signs for the church, which are the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And many great things the Lord's done in signs and wonders and miracles and uh, divers miracles, different things he's done. He's, he showed himself as God. The many things he's done, the witness of the signs. Then there's the witness of the sovereign. When you study this out and you see the witness that's there, it says, God also bearing them witness, verse 4. You see the witness of the sovereign. That's, that's God Almighty, the sovereign, the full 
all-powerful, almighty, all-reigning God Almighty that sits there on his throne in glory. First, he gave us, he gave us some, some signs uh, in the New Testament of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's the sign at his baptism of his voice. He spoke out in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17. He said, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. Then at the transfiguration, he spoke out again in, in uh, Matthew chapter 17 and verse number 5. says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So he spoke out twice. So his sign by his, by his own voice, he spoke. Some thought it thundered, but we know that by the scriptures that it was the voice of Almighty God saying, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. And then by visuals. If you remember... Many times the Pharisees, the scribes, as they ridiculed the Lord Jesus Christ, as they mocked him, they, they kept saying, prove your Christ, prove you're who you say you are. Remember Jesus preached that he was the light of the world. While he's hanging on Calvary, God showed them by a great sign, God showed them that Jesus Christ was the light of the world. While he hung there on Calvary and paid our sin debt, God in heaven turned the lights out throughout all the land. All the land. It wasn't just on Calvary's hillside. Honey, I believe with the word of God, when you read uh, the gospels there, as, as each one of them gives their accurate of you, I believe Luke gives the account that all the earth was without, without light. While the Son of God, the light of the world, hung on Calvary, God, by a sign, showed them, this is the light of the world. Remember his message? He said, I am the light of the world. And here he hangs on Calvary and all the lights went out throughout all the world. So the, the, the visuals that God gave there on Calvary. He gave the earthquake there. The graves opened up. And I'm telling you, wouldn't that be something there to be standing on the hillside of Calvary? It'd go dark and the earth begin to quake. Graves begin to open up. I'm telling you, boy, God, God let everybody know that this is my son hanging here on Calvary. And... Uh, God, God has given, God has given visual signs there throughout the New Testament of who He is and what He can do. He let them see in the Old Testament. He said, Moses, all I want you to do is lift up that rod, and you lift it up. The waves, the, the waters parted there, and the children of Israel was able to cross across, uh, was able to go across the Red Sea on dry ground. He done the same for for uh, uh, Joshua there at the, at the uh, uh, River Jordan. How that he rolled back the river Jordan. They said at that time the waters was nearly out of the banks because of the seasoning uh, that it was there. And he rolled that Jordan River back and them fellas went across through there. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, God showed us many, many things. Today, in the day that we live, we know that at times, uh, before and after rains, during the, you'll look up into the sky and you can see the rainbow. God said that's one of his signs. He hung that rainbow up there. It's abomination. Uh, what some folks do with the rainbow. That rainbow is God's sign of God giving peace to the earth and that he not destroy the whole land again by a flood. The Sodomites has taken that rainbow symbol and use it for their wickedness. And that's, a, that's an abomination in my mind, my heart. That's an abomination unto God to misuse the rainbow colors like that. That's wrong. Amen. Pick out something of your own if you want it. Uh, to make your own symbol. Don't use God's because God's not for that stuff. Amen? Amen. It's still wrong. I still preach it. It's wrong. Sodomy's wrong. And uh, God's not in that. God don't bless that. So, uh, so much for that. And I hope that didn't stump your toe, but uh, that's the truth of God's word. But God, by signs and wonders through the years, has showed us these great things. We've got a great salvation that should not be neglected and we should not let the things of God slip from us. A lot of folks, a, a carelessness, a lack of attention, a lack of alertness, a lack of care is how we let things slip away. God help us as a church not to let the, the principles and the doctrines of the Lord Jesus Christ slip away just because it's more convenient and, and it's, it's more comforting to the lost world to not preach the principles of God's word. God help us not to let them slip away. You lose the power of God when we dilute down the gospel. Amen? Only way you're going to go to heaven is to get saved. Only way you're going to get to go to God's 
Heaven is to be saved and born into the family of God Almighty, God's way. Regardless of what mankind's theories or thoughts is or man's way of making up for salvation, hey, listen, I want everybody to go to heaven. I want everybody to be saved. But the only way they're going to go is to come God's way, not my way. I've got family members that probably don't know the Lord as their personal Savior. I've got friends that don't know the Lord as their personal Savior. I've got folks I grew up with that is heavy on my heart because they've never had a true account of salvation in their life. It's my will to go to heaven, but they got to go God's way. they got to be saved. We've got a great salvation. It's provided free and fully through Jesus Christ. Don't change it. We're in a world of change, and they fuss about people that don't want to change. Listen, not everything's, not everything's to be changed. God said he was the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God said, I change not. He's not changing things. Before the foundation of the world, the triune Godhead, the trinity of God, decided that the way for mankind to be saved was through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary. That ain't changed. He used all those sacrifices and all those things uh, through the Old Testament way, uh, the, the, the tabernacles and things, that how that the Lord done that and the mercy seat and the blood. He used those things to paint the picture so that we could see the necessity of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews teaches us that Jesus Christ once and for all settled that account when he died on Calvary. Thank God for the great salvation that we have. I'm thankful for the salvation that my Lord and my Savior has provided us. Now tonight, if you're not absolutely positive, if you don't know without a shadow of a doubt that you possess this great salvation, I beg you, would you please get down wherever you are. If you're driving, pull off the side of the road, get in the parking lot somewhere. Bow your head wherever you are. Ask God in heaven to forgive you for being a sinner. Ask him to save your worthless soul. Ask him. And he said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's in Romans 10, I believe verse 13. That if we'll call on him, he'll, he'll save us. And uh, I'm thankful. I've not been what I should be. I, I, I admit that. I'm not been, I've not lived up to the great salvation God gave me. But I am thankful that I am saved through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 13, Romans 10 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God chose the foolishness of preaching. To save those which is lost. He tells that again in, in Romans there. Listen, God wants folks saved. Not just to be servants. Hey, listen, God could cause the beast of the field to serve him. He can do whatsoever he chooses to do. He didn't choose it that way. But he chose to save us through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not saved tonight, I beg you, please, find your place. Pull over, get, get somewhere by yourself. Bow down on your knees before God. If you can't bow, bow in your heart. That's where it's at. Because it tells us there in Romans 10 that it's, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. See, it's a heart thing. It ain't just the lips. It ain't what I think up here. It's what's in the heart. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ died on Calvary some 2,000 years ago for my sin. I believe that he died and that he rose again on the third day. I believe that he took the blood to the mercy seat in heaven, placed it before the Father. And when I asked him to save me on April the 28th, I believe it was, 1972, he wrote my name in the Lamb's Book of Life and there ain't nobody that can take it out. I believe I have eternal security through the Lord Jesus Christ because what he told me in John 3:16. For whosoever shall call upon, uh, for, uh, for God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When I got saved, it's everlasting. And I'm thankful for that. I do appreciate you joining in with us tonight.
If God's dealt with your heart and you need to be saved, you ask him to save you and trust his word, he'll save you. If I can be assisted to you, I'll be around the church here for a little while. You can give us a call here at the church, 704-871-1251. 704-871-1251. I'll be here around the church for a little while. If you need to call in, you can call in. I'll be glad to talk with you and help you if I can. And uh, if you don't get me, you leave a message on the machine, and I'll call you right back because I'll be in here getting some things tidied up here for a little bit. So uh, uh, that's just, uh, uh, that, that, I got to get things done. So anyway, uh, we're going to close out in a word of prayer tonight. Pray the Lord will take and help you. And then I'm going to look back on my Facebook here. If you've got some prayer requests or something that we need to add, you can share that there. And I'll mention that as I get done and close up here in just a moment. Lord, I thank you for the privilege. Thank you for the help and the opportunity, Lord, to try to preach and teach the Word of God. I know that in who I am and the best that I can do is nothing. It's not any good or it's void. But, Lord, I know that if you'll put your blessings on it, Lord, you can take my little bit and make a whole bunch out of it. You can take my insufficiency and make it all sufficient. So I ask you, Father, in Jesus' name, that you'll do just that tonight. Take thy word, use it in the hearts of folks. Lord, help people to see the seriousness of salvation these days, how serious it is that they must obtain salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that God you'll do that. Work in hearts. May folks be saved tonight through thy word and through thy will by the help of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray for these sick folk again. I ask you, Lord, please be with them and touch them. Give them healing. Give them help. And uh, Lord, uh, other special requests that's been mentioned tonight. Uh, Miss Tina there that mentioned her, her needs. Lord, you know what they are. My wife and her needs. I pray that God you touch and help her. The Greer Camp meeting and the needs there. I pray that Lord you'll bless that. I pray, Father, please, would you remove this coronavirus from our land? Lord, I pray that by thy grace and power, Lord, that you'd have mercy on America and you'd remove this coronavirus. It's causing so much troubles, so many sicknesses. It's hindering your church. I pray that, Lord, you'd have your will and you'd you'd remove it. You'd help us out with that, Father, in Jesus' name. Again, I thank you. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Thank you all for tuning in with us this evening. And uh, thank you for being there, Miss Tina, Brother James, uh, Miss Ann, and uh, Miss Gail, Alyssa. Alyssa's faithful, her and Clarence, several others watching there, uh, her papa, and then uh, the Clantons there, they tune in, Miss Tammy and that crowd. And uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate folks tuning in to our, our broadcast and watching and uh, I don't like it to have to do this way. I like church with the folks sitting in their pews. But I'm grateful and thankful that God's made a way that we can do this, uh, even when it's not healthy or safe for folks to uh, be congregating together in these days. But uh, we're going to try to we're going to try to get Sunday lined up. Um, plenty of area here in the parking lot. If we get the parking lot too full, we'll put chairs in the back here, and I'll stand on the bank and preach. But uh, we'll make it happen, whatever we need to do, uh, to where we can get the message out, and uh, folks can hear the Word of God. And God's children today needs encouragement. I need encouragement. Uh, We all go through battles. We all face different things in life. And uh, children, I'm telling you, there's so many people about us that are lost and undone. God's burdening my heart these days. There's so many, there's so many that needs to be saved. There's so many that needs to know the Lord as a real and a personal Savior in their life. So please help us. Pray for me. Some of you can't get out and about and do those things. I understand that. Mail it. Man, you can, you can stick stuff in the mail. Uh, you can call folks. You can do the Facebook and send them stuff. Uh, you can share our messages. I know I'm not a good preacher, but... I do believe, I really believe I'm preaching the truth of God's word. And I'm not hung up on man's delivery. I know that that has something to do with it. I understand that. You don't want to be an old dry piece of toast. But uh, at the same time, I believe that the power is in the word of God. And if we can share and get the word of God out to folks, I believe that it will make a difference and uh, folks can be saved. Amen. All right. God bless you all.
I was just reading up a few here. There's nothing that I can see needs to be attended to, no extra or new request. Uh, I don't remember on my pad there. Remember Miss Gail Leard? She's still healing up from a fall that she had a few weeks ago at work, uh, and uh, she's still suffering some with that, got pain that she's dealing with. So uh, you pray for Miss Gail Leard that she'll get all healed up uh, and get to feeling better. And uh, uh, she showed me the pictures of it. Man, she's got a she's got an ugly wound there where she uh, bruised up real bad from her fall. So uh, you pray for her that she'll get healed up. And do pray, do pray, please. Several times a day, make much prayer for Miss Nikki. Uh, pray all the time. Paul said to us, for, to us to pray without ceasing. And I know sometimes it's hard to be about prayer when you got to concentrate on your, on your work. We understand that. But, you know, in, in the break time between that, uh, be much about prayer because I believe uh, we need to be praying for these folks and uh, pray the Lord will touch and the Lord will help. I will try to continue on with our Hebrew study. I was debating on whether to stay with it or not. But uh, we'll try to do this Hebrew study on Wednesday evening services. If you can tune in with us live, that'd be great. If you can't, we're leaving it up uh, on our Facebook page, uh, Tabernacle Baptist Church Facebook page. And then I think you can link it from uh, my Facebook page as well. And there's several others that's got them up. Um, but uh, good to see all of you in there. Hello, Miss Kelly. I see Kelly uh, Beatty's in there. And... Uh, they need prayer. Remember her and her children, and and uh, she's got some special situations that needs to be resolved and finished, finalized. Um, and uh, I can't uh, I can't elaborate on that publicly yet, uh, but the Lord knows all about that. So just pray that God would uh, finish that up, and then pray for her baby Noah and Miss Carissa. She's going through some things. She sure needs our prayers as well. All right. God bless you. Until next time, may the Lord be your keeper. You have a good evening.